Mr. President, the winner of the Millennium Technology Prize 2016, Your Excellencies, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, no one could foresee the internet. Tim Berners-Lee was awarded 12 years ago the very first Millennium Technology Prize for creating the World Wide Web. His discoveries started nothing else than the digital revolution. During the history of mankind, Homo sapiens has undergone the cognitive revolution, the agricultural revolution, and 250 years ago, we lived the first industrial revolution when muscle power was replaced by mechanical power. The second industrial revolution was kicked off by electricity. And 50 years ago, the third industrial revolution was started by semiconductors and computers. And now we are living the fourth industrial revolution, the digital revolution, that changes the way we work and do business, the way we manufacture and transport, and the way we learn and relate to each other. Europe has seen 125,000 jobs in the sector of information technology and communication created annually, and the digital single market is expected to create almost 1 million new jobs by 2020. Today, 15% of the world economy is based on the Internet. Ladies and gentlemen, disruptive innovations of our time indeed do change the world. They emanate usually from free fundamental research, the findings of which no one could have imagined to ask for. Therefore, free basic research must be safeguarded, and at the same time, our university network needs to host a comprehensive base of research domains, as excellence and innovation can sparkle and emerge from any scientific, scholarly or artistic domain. The value of research is undisputable. Research is one of the best investments made with public funds. Its economic return has been estimated to vary between 20 and 50 percent, and research contributes directly to managing societal challenges. It also contributes directly to the development and maintenance of a critical and reflective society. The Millennium Technology Prize winners have created both knowledge and economic value. They have demonstrated how basic and applicational research feed each other. Fundamental research yields new ideas for applications, and development of applications then in turn create new questions for basic research. Several of the winners have obtained later other recognitions, such as the Nobel Prize. This demonstrates that pushing the frontier of knowledge is certainly not in contradiction with creating value for mankind. Indeed, our Master of Ceremony, Professor Sirpa Jalkanen, belongs to the same category. She's academician of science and an innovator. She just recently was awarded the EU Prize for Women Innovators. However, the competition in the innovation scene gets harder. Last year was the most innovative year ever, according to the global patenting activity. It increased from 14 to 15 with 14 percent, and doubled since 2009 to a stunning two and a half million inventions disclosed in the year 2015. What has enabled this? is the new borderless global public-private partnership collaborations between universities, companies, and governmental agencies who find nowadays each other through web information. 
The breakthroughs in 2015 include the first tests of self-driving cars on public roads, drugs tested on 3D printers, cloud storage of data becoming mainstream, an Internet of Things allowing omnipotent intelligence even in homes. And last year, 100 men and women were selected from 200,000 applicants for training to leave planet Earth in about 10 years on a one-way journey to Mars. This brings me to a plea to the humanities scholars and social scientists. Technological solutions in natural and life sciences have no chances for success unless they are accepted by the civil society. Therefore, your knowledge on behavior, psychology, the society, economy, teaching and learning, legislation, ethics and philosophy is crucial for the creation of sustainable new technologies. Ladies and gentlemen, now more than ever we need inspired, talented researchers to create knowledge that can be translated into solutions that help us address global challenges, sustain societal stability, and create growth and well-being. And now I give the floor to the chair of the International Selection Committee, Professor Jarl Ture Eriksson, please.